disrupt the weird thing to happen. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kit's Corner. Hope you're in a fantastic day so far. People are still in dire struggle right now, and it's it's alarming rate, and it's still happening, you know, beyond COVID pandemic, beyond the hyperinflation that we're facing right now. Like, we've been in financial crisis after crisis after crisis, and it just seems to, it never seems to lighten up, and just seems to be digging worse and worse down to the, down to the knit and grit, and people you know, hardworking individuals that are trying to pay their dues, trying to survive in this hyperactive, crazed world that we're in right now, um, are struggling, deeply, deeply struggling. And we've shown how, you know, the COVID pandemic really inflated this and how it just bolstered this, you know, financial crisis where people were told to, you know, lock up their doors and, you know, stay at home and survive this out. And, We'll, we'll, we'll decide if you get a, a, a substantial amount of money that we can actually pay your dues and we'll decide for you and so on and so forth. And a lot of people have lost their businesses. They lost their livelihoods. And that's why truckers across Canada got together with a bunch of other Canadians and a bunch of other supporters to announce that we're done with this. We are done with this tyranny. We are in financial ruins. We have nothing to lose and we need to go after the tyrannical force of the government that's been placating this and using uh, COVID pandemics to their own evil advantages. But here's where this gets really, uh, really close to home here because this is happening um, in Toronto, which is relatively close to me. And um, this is from the Canadian Independent reporting on this. And it says, shocking video shows a massive lineup at the Fort York Food Bank in Toronto, Ontario. And this is, we've, we've seen these videos before of the long lines at food banks. I think we showed the one in, I think it was Austin, Texas, where they actually had trucks lined up on the highway uh, during the pandemic where they had to circle around this one church to get food because they, people cannot survive without a sustainable income. And considering that they were only getting you know, $1,200 here and told to ride it out for almost three years, It it's not going to help people. It's not going to help people um, to ride out three years with only one paycheck. It's not going to help people if they're just getting crumbs and you get $5 trillion away to Wall Street. It's not helping people. It's causing more of a burden and crisis to people. And it's happening here in Canada. And we're facing the same struggles as our brothers and sisters in the United States. And it's happening. It's happening more and more often. But just take a look at this. Look at the lineup of people. Look at that. And that continues on. That so they just they only show a portion of it, but that goes on and on and on and on. Huge lineups of people at a food bank in Toronto. And it just goes to show you the 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 worsening, you know, kind of economic sanctions that's happening that you know, middle class people are becoming more and more poor in a city like Toronto, where there are wealthy, you know, people living in penthouses and condo buildings. And you have, you know, millionaire investors and people on the Toronto Stock Exchange living in that same city. And they're seeing this happening and they're just, you know, dry, they couldn't care less. And you see this all throughout North America. Look at all the tent cities that are happening in California and San Francisco, the mass amount of crime rates. You know, poverty is one of those things that amounts to rises in crime and violence and hatred and bigotry and everything else. And the fact that we have um, such a, a an economic gap between the people in near poverty and the extremely wealthy that are you know, taking reign and control and oppressing more people. It's, it, it's just, it, we live in a dystopia. We live in a dystopia to have this happening. So Justin Trudeau, <laughs> our commander in chief, the 
prime minister of tyranny uh, is responding with this. And he is. so he announced that uh, the new budget just came out. And this is what he's saying here. He's saying that conservative politicians have no plan to make your life more affordable. And they're voting against measures in budget 2023 that will, like dental care for uninsured Canadians, will stay focused on growing the middle class and will keep supporting Canadians when they need it most. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I can somewhat agree to this because while Pierre Polyev is good at the quit whips and going against Justin Trudeau and calling him out, which is definitely something we need in our political landscape, the Conservative Party doesn't really have an action plan to really get down to helping you and making things more affordable and and reducing the inflation. They don't really have a measure to this. But the Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau's reign and administration, is making the situation worse. So you're literally deciding between worse inflation or no, nothing. There is no really any political party at this moment right now that is diving in deep to actually helping Canadians at this situation. And considering these headlines are, you know, continuing to roundabout and um, highlighting the nefarious of Justin Trudeau, like this, Canada pledges additional $100 million in humanitarian aid to Ukraine that Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland are rounding up tax dollars that you pay towards that are supposed to go into investments like healthcare, education, good jobs, you know, helping the homeless, helping our own citizens. That is the idea of paying our taxes, paying our dues that invest into Canada, invest in your cities and towns all across Canada so we can actually make society better for us is going towards another country filled with neo-Nazis. So that's kind of the lucrative, you know, hat trick that Justin Trudeau and Christian Freeland and other administrators in the Liberal Party are continuing to do as there's lineups at food banks in Toronto. And Justin Trudeau is is pledging that he's going to support you. He's going to help you and make things affordable for you. Or how about this? Prime Minister's Christmas vacation in Jamaica. You know how much that costs? His little vacations because you know how hard it is to be a prime minister how hard it is to have all that tyrannical power against people. It is, it's, it's so hard for someone like him. They needs to take multiple vacations a year when literally there's people that cannot afford to leave their house. There there's people that don't even have a home to stay in. There's people out on the street and he's taking multiple vacations and it's costing Canadian taxpayers nearly $160,000 according to documents. The trip was the Trudeau's family's first overseas Christmas vacation since their 2019 trip to Costa Rica, which cost nearly $200,000. And let me remind people, these are multiple trips annually. Multiple trips annually that are costing taxpayers. While there's people lined up at food banks and Justin Trudeau announcing on Twitter that our budget is going to be more affordable for you. Do you see how we live in this dystopia? Do you see the lies just blurting out and you just got to read between the lines and understand that, you know, what he's saying on social media isn't exactly what he's pledging for. While there's two sides to this Trudeau character, there's the nice approach of, oh, I'm with you. I'm supportive of you. But then there's also Justin Trudeau, trust fund kid, son of uh, of Pierre Trudeau, and continuing on the reign of tyranny. Just how insane that is. Or how about this? Trudeau family vacation with wealthy friends who donated to the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. PM's New Year's Eve trip to exclusive Jamaican local cost t- taxpayers at least $160,000 for security and staff. Gee, I wonder why they would need so much security 
if Justin Trudeau continues to say that everyone loves him? Why would they need that much security if people adore this character? Or maybe he just lives in his own narcissistic world and he's screwing you off, telling you to go pound sand and try to ride it out on the streets while he's vacation New Year's Eve <laughs> at a Jamaican exclusive resort with a bunch of billionaires who donated to his corrupted foundation. Like, he is he is almost the perfect Democrat. I'll say this. He's almost the perfect Democrat in the United States because we see this often. This is like a Tuesday in the U.S. Capitol. But here in Canada, we don't really see this often. We don't see this hardly enough. But for this one family, for Justin Trudeau and the and his counterparts to do this while there's people starving out in the streets in the cold and trying to make make headways and trying to survive this ridiculous dystopia world that we're in. It is just so absurd. And it just goes to show you that our Canadian parliamentary system, um, I, I, you know, it is, uh, I would say a step better than the American system, the, you know, two party duopoly, I would say it's a step better, but it is no way a perfect vision for, for, for citizens. And it just goes to show you that we could be tyrannical, corrupted, and nefariously evil and ghoulish as our U.S. counterparts. And just how corrupted we can get. <laughs> While there's people starving in the streets, you have the person responsible for us that could easily, uh, through executive order, could easily... Uh, help homeless people, could easily fix the healthcare crisis, could easily, uh, you know, be a representative for every single Canadian citizen. He will not do that. Nor most of the premiers, because Doug Ford here in Ontario is also, you know, making big holiday vacations and also taking t uh, lobbyist money to do nefarious stuff against Ontario citizens while our health care is deteriorating, while infrastructure is coming down to a, a complete, utter disgrace, and th the entire province is just falling apart while this continues on. So just, just a little tidbit of my neighboring brothers and sisters here in Canada. Mm -hmm.